Hi everyone, it's Gwen from Hummingbird Tarot and today I'm sharing my April favorites. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell so you're notified every week when I upload a new video. Chapped lips. Ah, oh, better. I don't know about you. Were you ready for the month to be over? Give me a thumbs up if you were ready for the month to be over, just like me. I was hoping we would know more about what's coming and any changes that would be happening. Hopefully things would be loosening up a little bit more, but it seems to just be more of the same here in California where I live. We're all still stuck at home. Life feels like it's in limbo, like nothing is happening, nothing, nothing really bad close to home. But, you know, with my immediate family, I did have a friend who lost her mom to the coronavirus and that was pretty shocking. So it started to get real in the month of April. I'm not sad to see the month of April go. So let's get into the decks that were on my tarot shelf in the month of April. And then I have a really interesting story for you at the end of this about something that happened in the month of April to me. So let's just get started. My One of my standards, the Radiant Rider Weight. I use this deck quite a bit. It's one that's been in my collection for quite a while and it's in heavy rotation. It's just your standard Rider Waite Smith images and you'll notice I do have clothes on my naked people. For many reasons, I have younger people that watch my channel and then I, some people, <laughs> some people find it jarring in the middle of readings to have nudity come up and it can be intrusive in the reading. So it's easier for me, I find, if I just put clothes on my people and I'll do a, a deck mod video showing you how I do that and the steps that I take with that in another video. So that's one of my well-used decks. I do have another miniature deck and this is the deck that came in the complete tarot kit. It was a deck that had, oh, here's the back of the Radiant Rider wait before I forget. Complete Tarot Kit also has the Thoth Tarot deck. They're both in small decks like this. This is another Rider Waite Smith deck, but the colors on this one are much more calm. And I found I had this deck actually sitting out on my desk and just found myself when I'm on a call that's completely unrelated to tarot. I, it's just become a new habit of mine to just be shuffling the cards. It's almost like a security blanket. I have been doing readings with these, but what I've been using them most for is just to shuffle. I find it very soothing, very soothing to me. So that's what I've been doing and the cards are going everywhere right now for some reason. I guess they, they wanna talk. They have something to, to be said. Now I'm realizing as I'm pulling this next deck out, that I, I just really fell in love with this deck again. I can't remember the name of it and I don't have the box. I'm gonna have to look it up on my computer and I'll post it under the screen. And I put this in order because I wanna go over this in my Rider Waite Smith Versus series. And it's just got silhouettes in it and I find it very compelling, very easy to read. The card stock is, it's okay, it's, okay. it's not, it's not too thin. It's thin enough to shuffle fairly easily. And this is about the size of a standard Oracle deck. But my favorite thing about this deck is just how soothing the colors are. And it it's like looking at a sunset the whole time that you're reading the deck. This has become a new favorite of mine. I've been using this one a lot in this month. So this next one is one that I got recently. And this is the miniature version of the Everyday Witch Tarot deck. Again, like that that other Rider Waite Smith deck, I just have kept this one out sitting on my desk. It's one of those decks I just I walk around shuffling it. They've both become, these two decks I have been like my security blanket. And I also used this one kind of like with doodling. When I, when I was on the phone during calls, I just, I gradually, 
and slowly edged it one card at a time during phone calls and it took me a, several weeks to do that and I just would do one or two cards during a call. I used a Sharpie for that and it turned out more purple than blue but it's okay, I love it. I also used the big version of the Everyday Witch and I'm sorry I didn't show you the images there. Here's some of the images. I love the artwork in this deck. It's very easy for me to read. And this is one of those decks that tells a good story. I love the artwork. It reads really well for me. And so it's kind of like the, the perfect marriage of all of those things. Because sometimes I'll have a deck where I love the images. They're beautiful, but it doesn't really call to me. and doesn't read. I like looking at it, but I can't read it very easily. And then you know it just it doesn't tick all the boxes for me so this the miniature version I'll show you the difference in size here is let me flip it around so it's a little easier to see the difference it's much smaller than the regular deck and I do have a walkthrough of both of those decks and I wish with my small hands this deck is a little big for me to shuffle this I can't shuffle it this way I have to turn it this way which means the cards flop around on me and I'd love to be able to shuffle it sideways like I do this deck here I can shuffle it like this I do like to riffle shuffle from time to time too and I can make it happen but it's just much easier if the deck is smaller and I wish that I had an everyday witch tarot deck that was in between that'd be like the perfect size in between the two of those one of my other decks, perfect example, the Light Seer's Tarot. I, I used this one, tried to use this one in April. I love, absolutely love the images in this and the artwork. I just pulled this card from my one card reading today. I absolutely love how compelling the artwork in this deck is. I do find it easy to read, but I... I get so annoyed every time I try to shuffle it. My hands are small. I have a hard time holding onto the deck. It's just a little bit too too thick for me. And I end up, I, I just can't find a way to comfortably shuffle this deck for me. So every time I try to use it, the primary feeling I'm getting from it is annoyance, which is so upsetting to me because I love this deck. I want to use this deck and my hands are just too darn small to comfortably shuffle this deck. I don't want to spread it all out over the table and put it back together because that it, it dents the cards and bends them and it nicks the edges. Shuffling it like this, I just find it cumbersome. It's just, it's just a little too thick and I end up dropping cards. And this deck just isn't practical for me and I'm frustrated because I keep coming back to it. I keep wanting to use it and I just can't find a way around it. Now I was really surprised to go back to the, the Everyday Witch, the mini tarot deck. This deck right here was way smaller than I was expecting. I was hoping it was more of this size right here, the one that I shared with you earlier. And so that deck I showed with you earlier, this is the standard size of a regular tarot deck and it's right here in between. And then you've got the Everyday Witch mini which is super tiny. So I was really sad because I've been looking forward to getting the Everyday Witch mini version for months. I ordered it last year and I and I got it. And I was really sad and a little heartbroken <laughs> because I didn't think I'd be able to use it. But I have actually been pleasantly surprised at how comfortable I've been. And I think part of that might be I keep it sitting on my desk and Every time I'm on the phone and instead of doodling or doing something else, if I wasn't edging it, then I was just sitting here shuffling it, shuffling it, shuffling it. And I think because I handled it so much there, I've actually been using it for readings. I'm surprised. I didn't think I was going to be able to use it for readings because it seemed it was just so small. It was almost impractical for regular regular readings on a regular basis. Maybe like a one card pull for myself or or, you know, putting a, a card up for energy work or something like that. I thought I might use it for, but but not for that. So and because I was vibing so much with the Everyday Witch this month, I pulled out my Everyday Witch Oracle deck. And the card stock on these, there's the back, they're kitty cats, is exactly the same as it, as the uh, the regular deck feels. And the artwork 
feel, is very similar to. My one pet peeve with this deck is that the writing is so small down here and the font that they use is really hard to read. Let me just bring it way up so you can see. So, um, but I do, I just have to wear my reading glasses. I'm having a hard time with reflections. There we go. So I do really appreciate the images in this. And then another Oracle deck I've been using a lot is the Seven Directions. And there's what the back looks like. And there's some really positive, supportive messages in this deck. And I love, I use this one, this deck in lots of different ways. I pull a card from it almost every day and put it up for the day so I can look at it. And I'll do it as a clarifier card when I do readings. Sometimes I'll do it, uh, pull two or three cards from this to supplement a tarot reading. Uh, and if I'm using multiple decks, I sometimes I'll pull, you know, two or three tarot decks together and then throw some cards from this in as a part of the reading. So I find this, this deck to be very ver versatile and the messages are really powerful. And then you won't be surprised by this one if, if you watch any of my other videos. And that's the Sacred Traveler Oracle. I did do a walkthrough of this deck that just posted on my channel and I love this deck. In fact, I don't think I've, I think it's in the same order that it was in. I haven't used it. I just recorded that video a couple days ago. But this, this deck has been in constant rotation in my reading and I use it often because I just absolutely love it. There's the back of the deck and then I edged this one as well. I also, on the, the Light Sears Tarot, when I was trying to connect with it as well, I also chose colors to edge it with and I just chose colors like that's got a yellow edge and this one's got more of like a blue turquoise and this one's got more of a reddish orange I, I chose colors that were complementary to the, the background color of the card itself those are the decks that I used in the month of April and then I wanted to talk about one of my favorites that uh, I mean I can't go go anywhere or do much and I ended up I ended up finding this chai tea that I've been drinking this past month, this past month called the Blue Lotus Chai. And I'll put the chai tea, I'm actually drinking it right now. Got a big mug of it. The chai tea in here with some honey and coconut milk. Mm. Absolutely wonderful. It's the little things in life. And I, there's been lots of little things lately because can't go anywhere. You gotta find your enjoyment somewhere else. So this was a favorite of mine this month. So another thing that happened in April is I bought myself some fairy lights and just something I was getting, feeling bored, saw something on Amazon and purchased it. And I put fairy lights in the back behind this teak wooden screen. And so they're, they're sparkling and shining through. And I like how it turned out. It's been fun. Adds a little bit of magic and sparkle to, to my, uh, to my videos and my readings. You may have watched it, you may not have. I'll go ahead and put a link to it there, but I made a video on how to make your own Florida water. And something interesting, this is the story that I wanted to share with you. I made my Florida water and I've left it on my windowsill. I had some cards around it with the energy that I wanted to infuse into the water as well. Most of it was healing energy, protection, cleansing. Uh, one of the challenges I've had is that with everyone home, I'm not saging like I usually do. And I have some people in my home that have allergies and so burning sage with them in the house isn't practical right now because they have a really hard time with that. It interferes with their breathing and triggers their allergies if I do it when they're home. And usually I'll you know, cleanse the house, use it to cleanse my reading space and then I'll open up the house and let it all air out. Well, I can't do that because they're all here these days. So I was running low on, I, I use a lot of essential oil sprays and I was running low on those and I wanted to make myself some Florida water. So I decided to record it and I made a recording of that. And it's basically a combination of um, herbs and essential oils in a mixture that's got alcohol and water in it so that, that helps the oils mix it also helps keep 
the bacteria from growing in there and you use it as an essential oil that you'll add to a mix with water in it or you know if you want to mop your floors you put you pour a little bit of Florida water in there well I had a mason jar that I was using and then I also had a glass de Serona bottle that was empty that I was going to strain the liquid and then put it into that glass de Serona bottle and there's been a lot of activity visitors I see sp spirits ghosts and spirits and there have been a lot of shadows and um, it's not just me that's saying it coming in and out of my office that a lot more than usual and I was really disturbed because that De Serona bottle that I've had for maybe four years was sitting on the windowsill was sitting on the windowsill next to my bottle or my mason jar that had the Florida water in it and the glass jar got a big crack in it and it just split right down the middle of it and went before luckily it was still empty so the liquid didn't leak out everywhere and that combined with the additional activity that I'd had in my office was really disturbing and I thought something doesn't want me to to use this Florida water was my initial thought. Well, then I did a reading and I found out that the exact opposite was true. And there was some concern about the safety of the bottle that I was gonna use and they didn't want me to use it. So they cracked it before I put anything in it. And that was a lot more comforting to me once, once I figured that out because I thought, mm, I don't like the fact that something's interfering with what I'm doing here. And I, and I still, even though I was a lot happier with the response there, it still is a little unnerving to have something like that happen. So I went ahead and obviously I, I couldn't use that same container. And I felt like that would normally be a time when I would sage the heck out of my office uh, and sage the heck out of the whole house. So I went ahead and poured and strained the Florida water. And I had a little bit of vodka left <laughs> in this vodka bottle. And I have put my Florida water back in here. It smells so good. What I did was I have a spray bottle. And so how I use this is I have a spray bottle like this that I filled up mostly with water. And then I poured just a touch of the Florida water in here. And then I have sprayed the heck out of the whole house and the space, especially my, my office, which is my reading space. Like, instantly, it felt better. I was probably going to wait a little bit longer before using the Florida water because for really for it to reach its full potential, you leave it sitting in a windowsill where the sunlight and the moonlight can help charge it and you're focusing on the energy of what you want to infuse in the water for, you know, for about 30 days. It's only been a couple weeks since I made this and I can't believe how strong it is and how powerful it is already. So you can really, if you make your own Florida water, just start using it when you feel like it's ready. Because, and then I went ahead, what I've been doing is I put this bottle that's already been strained, I went ahead and put it back in the windowsill and in between uses, I've just, I've been keeping it there. So it can, can, it can continue to charge from the sunlight and the moonlight. Yeah, that's been pretty awesome. So, whew, so that's what's been going on in the month of April. If you want to see a full walkthrough of any of these decks, feel free to shoot me a comment below. And I am looking forward, if you're looking forward to moving into May and hoping things are going to be positive, give me a thumbs up or shoot me a comment below about anything interesting that's been going on with you in the month of April. I'd love to hear from you guys. Thanks for stopping by.